Hello guys, Jelic like of Vlog back with another video. Today I'm going to be going over another Marvel Legends review, but this is going to be a two-pack. This is the Avengers Endgame Infinity Saga Iron Man Mark 85 uh, versus Thanos two-pack. So this looks awesome. This looks really, really cool. Uh, you can see it comes with a whole bunch of accessories and stuff like that, and this looks awesome. You see all the hands that Iron Man comes with and stuff like that, and all the, you know, uh, kind of the, the accessories, the blade, the shield, and the other head sculpt, and these things look awesome. And then we have Thanos on the other side with a updated blade, the gauntlet and stuff like that and this looks absolutely awesome so i cannot wait to get this out of the packaging however let's take a look at the other uh sides of the box you have a uh kind of like a little poster here uh and i say that because of the other side the rest of it is finished um and then funny thing i don't think when you put the regular two infinity saga boxes together when you put another one like right here that doesn't finish it it just kind of looks like it duplicates it i tried doing it but uh it doesn't really work that way just a little quick side note um and then on the top you see it says iron man mark 85 and then thanos and then the avengers endgame uh kind of logo here and then that is spot varnished here so that is cool and then on the back you have a spot varnish poster of Avengers Endgame. However, it is changed. So here, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s head is covered up by an Iron Man helmet, which is cool. Um, but it, I don't know. I, I mean, it does look a little bit weird to me. Um, maybe because I'm so used to seeing Robert Downey Jr.'s face there. And then over here, we have a read-up on Iron Man. If you want to read it, you can go pause the video and read that now. And then on the other side, we have a read-up for Thanos. So if you want to read that, pause the video and read it right now. So here are the two figures out of the packaging. We have the Mark 85 Iron Man and we have the Thanos all the way over here. Um, and not bad, not bad at all. But before we get into this, I do want to get into the accessories because there are a lot to go through. All right, so man, do we have a lot of accessories uh, with this two pack here. So going on Iron Man first, you can see he does have the helmeted head sculpt here and then the neck joint is attached. Um, we don't know why they did this. Uh, you still can head swap. You can just take the uh, head out of the, this, like, neck, uh, part here, but I don't want to do that, because I'm, uh, scared of breaking my figure, but you can do that, it's, uh, easy to, um, so you could just pop that out there and put it on any other figure, and then we have this really nice-looking Robert Downey Jr. head, which absolutely looks amazing, this looks really good, in my opinion, and I love all the nicks and the gashes and the, the marks that he has here, especially on that forehead there, it looks really good, all the dirt that you can see, it does really, really look good, and I like this a lot over here. Um, so that does look really nice over there. And then with the helmeted head, you could see there's this one separation part here, so you know when you click it into the neck, and it goes in just like that. And it is pretty much seamless. You can't even tell that there's a separation there. And then even with this, although it, you can tell a little bit more the shaping and stuff like that, when you put it in here... It just looks like his normal neck and you can't even tell so i think that is absolutely amazing and i'm personally fine with um having it attached to the neck part there however this head sculpt and just specifically these two the unmasked versions are way bigger than they should be they even feel a little bit bigger um and even this one this one just feels like way too big and this helmet is way too narrow and small um, just a nitpick, it is a, a noticeable when you get it in hand, but it's not horrible, and this definitely does not ruin the head sculpts nor the figure for me. So, with the hands too, you have the fisted hands, which I think should have been closed in a little bit more at the actual, like, uh, palm here. Uh, I think that they definitely should have been, like, a little bit more, because now they just look like they're, like, out like that a little bit. Um, and then the actual repulsor hands, which are hinged, are really nice. You have that gunmetal color just going throughout the hand, which looks really good. Another one right there for the other arm. You have a snapping hand that does come with all the infinity stones in here. That is really nice. Um, so that's pretty cool. And you can see he's making the snapping jester there, which is really nice. Really good paintwork on that, except for mine. It did get a little bit sloppy with the mind stone there. And then we have the grabbing hand for the blade, where he takes this blade and you just, just put it in his hand like that. And, yeah, you pretty much will just hold it like that. And, like, in the beginning of the battle of the movie. So, that is nice. And then over here, you do have the Repulsor Blasts uh, effect pieces. And for some reason, I guess mine has a little error there. But you can see it doesn't fit all the way in. So, but, you know, it, it is it is still good for what it is. You just want to put this in the hand or the actual arm here. Uh, flick it upward. Is that the right? Yep, that's the right. Uh, I can't tell my right from my left. This is the right arm, uh, the correct arm. So here we go over here. That's what it looks like, and that's pretty cool. It doesn't go all the way in, so don't try and force it, but it will work, and it will fit in there fine. It does fit into the feet a lot better, but yeah, these things are very 
kind of like flimsy, so just be careful you don't warp that. In mine, there's a little bit of warpage on some of them. And then over here, we have the actual blade, which is, you know, fine. It's nothing too crazy. And then the shield isn't anything new either because it's the same mold that we got from the Iron Spider and Iron Man 2 pack, just in this translucent type color for that uh, type of, uh, I guess, like, tech version of the nano shield or just kind of like the trans elusive version so that's pretty cool he has a huge handle and i don't really like how it's so big because it is very loose on his actual um arm you kind of clip it to the arm so the hand being in there and not being in there doesn't really matter so you just kind of clip it in like that and it's fine here but you want to be careful because anywhere lower it is just going to easily slip off so just kind of put it high up on there um so it's not that bad just a little wobbly sometimes you have to know the right way to put it so then moving on to Thanos we have this where he has the helmeted head and no this is not removable because you do have other head sculpts there and the eyes are really good really bad I mean I think I got one of the better ones I think but the eyes just look a little bit weird I don't know why they did it so poorly with this uh the teeth are fine everything looks good uh pretty much the same thing they've got from the other Thanos this is the actual build a figure but I'll get more into that later this smiling head sculpt, while it is good, it just looks creepy, but that's just personally me. Um, but this is really good, and I do like this a lot. The eyes are definitely better. And then we do have the dusted away head sculpt, which was put in the packaging. And this isn't really done well, because it kind of just looks like rocky, kind of just like just a very rigid and like burnt, like crisp. It's just like Anakin at the end of Revenge of the Sith. It's just very like, doesn't really seem like he's dusting away. They did good, but like... I don't know. I mean, there are some nicks and gashes there on his face, which I do think are pretty cool, and I like how that's added. It's like the end of the battle after everything's over. And then we have probably one of my favorite expressions, the regular expression of the stern face for Thanos, which I do like a lot, and I think that this is really good, and you can see all the sculpt work and detail that they put into this, and this lo does look really nice. And then over here, we do have the both hands for the gauntlet over here. Those are the only interchangeable hands he gets. That's how it looks. And this does look really weird how it's like bulky on the front and then a little bit skinny on the end. Uh, but once it's put in, it does look a lot better. You have the snapping hand with no stones because the, those were put into Iron Man's gauntlet at the end of the end game. And then over here, we do have all the stones because this can be used for like the battle and stuff like that, which I think is really cool. Um, all the stones here are pretty cool except for the time stone, which again, a little bit of a paint error there. Um, but yeah, so this does look really good, and I like this a lot. And just to show you what it looks like when it's put into the gauntlet, um, because it does look a little bit weird without it being in there, just putting that in, it looks great, and I like it a lot, and I think it's really cool. And then getting on to the blade, and oh my gosh, this is probably one of the best things about this two-pack, because the other one was a piece of garbage, it was, like, really bad, barely looked accurate at all. They had, the only thing that was pretty much accurate was the blades facing the opposite way, other than that, it was complete trash. This is amazing. I love this. The gold handle looks really good and all that stuff. I like the little handlebars that they included there and everything here. All the work and detail looks absolutely fabulous. And this is really good and I absolutely love this. And, you know, it's pretty good. So taking a look at the Iron Man figure, this is pretty much the same one that we got in the other one. I believe the Fat Thor wave um, of Endgame. Just, you know, minor differences and the gunmetal gray you know, it being changed from regular gray or like a metallic to the gunmetal, um, which I do think it was a regular gray, not a gunmetal. So I do prefer the other gray than this, but I think it's fine. Um, I, you know, it, it does, it, it fits, but it's not the most accurate, I think, I'm pretty sure. The other one just looks a little bit better, in my opinion. But this is really nice. You know, you can see everything here. Uh, they didn't really, you know, do anything too crazy, but I do have to commend them on the fact that they did make everything look pretty good on my arc your actor there. It is nice. They painted and stuff like that. The eyes are pretty much just a white, which I do wish that they would have, you know, maybe put like a blue trim or made them blue or something like that. I believe they did do that with one of the figures. Um, I have a poster right up here, something like that, where his eyes have a blue trim around it and it's like white. That would look really awesome on a figure like this. And especially because it is an updated version, that would have been nice. We have some blue over here and stuff like that and the arms look pretty good too. Uh, they are pinned, which is quite annoying because recently they started moving to pinless, which uh, kind of makes this figure stand out a little bit. 
And then the feet over here annoys me a lot because you can't really move them up or down that much at all. Uh, but that will be for the articulation segment. The feet themselves are fine, nothing too crazy. Uh, we do have the serial number somewhere here. There it is. Uh, for some reason, there's some paint scuffage on my figure. It's like right there. And then some of them on the back, I do believe. But it's not horrible. Don't think it's for everybody as this figure isn't really that bad. Now onto the Thanos figure. This is a lot more of a big figure. Um, and it is actually a build figure. You can just simply uh, pop out pieces like that. You know, just pretty much just put them back in like that. And then when they kind of, you know, stop a little bit while you move them, that's how you know it's completely connected. Um, but yeah, so it is a build figure still, which is good. So you just kind of put that back in and just like that, it's good. So that's nice. And I do like that they changed everything from that bronze brownish color to the gray color, the kind of dark gray. It looks everything, makes everything look much more, you know, kind of accurate and better. I love this. This is such a step up besides the fact that this paint, you know, if we had a clean Mark 85, why couldn't we have a clean Thanos? It just doesn't really make sense to me why they put a battle damage Thanos with a clean Mark 85, even though we've never gotten a um, battle damage Mark 85 before. But this figure isn't bad at all. I do like this a lot, and I think it's really good. I like how you can see how some of the armor sort of came off, so that way you can see there, it's like, you know, during the battle, how one shoulder, uh, or not one shoulder, but one shoulder, like, armor piece is missing, and then the other piece is on there, so this is really cool. And again, the gauntlet does look really nice on the Thanos figure, and nothing really looks bad here, just aside from it, it doesn't really look good. I know it's on purpose, that it's like this and it's missing some paint spots but it doesn't look on purpose it looks like an accident or just a bad paint job of this figure because you can see some of it kind of fading a little bit there it just looks a little bit digital or something like a spray paint and it doesn't really look good all right going on to iron man he looks down this far which is there is some gapage there which is annoying because this is on a dumbbell joint looks up not very far at all very annoying this like i cannot stand this so that does bum me out a lot of course, he has the head tilting there like that, which is really good. Of course, you know, turns side to side. Arm moves all the way around, moves out this far as well. For some reason, mine's a little bit stuck. And then uh, upper bicep swivel, double, double, double jointed elbows there, which again, do have pins. And then, you know, the hand moves or the wrist with that uh, vertical hinge there. And then the diaphragm joint, uh, moving these arms up again, he moves this far forward, which isn't really good, moves this far back, which is fine, and then side to side, which is, you know, it, it, it works, I'm fine with that, and then uh, putting this back down over here, then his legs do move out this far, which is not really good, uh, this far back, which I guess is, you know, a little bit better than what we normally see, but not really anything too crazy, and then the hips move out this far, which is okay for an Iron Man figure. I think it works just fine. Then we have double joint, jump, oh my gosh, double jointed knees. And then we do have the ankle not really moving up or down at all, just kind of like that. Uh, does annoy me. And then we have ankle pivot as well there, so that is good. And that should be it with this figure. And not saying Thanos has anything new to the table, but I think it is the most interesting because he doesn't have that, you know, bad articulation points. So he can look down this much looks up this high and then over here you can move the arm you know completely out but you do have to put it a little bit this way in order to do that and as well as the other one too you can just kind of do that he has single jointed elbows there not double jointed which makes sense for a figure like this you can bend it back a little bit to make it look like he broke his arm which is a little bit weird but funny and then his hand does move like that both of them has the hinge like that ab crunch this much forward which is i guess it's you know not really anything um but it, it it you know it's there and then back it's fine nothing too crazy does look a little bit weird though uh there is a little bit of gapage between there but it's pretty much just nitpicking at this point and then the leg moves this high up which is pretty good for a figure like this Moves back this far which is fine double jointed knees which i do really like about this figure um and then kicks out this far, which is pretty good. And then, you know, taking into consideration that kind of downward skirt piece doesn't really affect any articulation, which I do like. Ankle moves down this far, and then the ankle moves up this high. And then over here, we don't have ankle pivot, but it does rock side to side. So that is pretty good. And I'm actually genuinely happy with the articulation from this figure.
one thing to note, this figure, his arm does move that high, while the other one does move a little bit higher because of that one shoulder piece there, which I'm personally fine with. And then just to show you one last time, this awesome blade being put in Thanos' hand like that. And that's how it fits. It is going to just do that, but it won't really fall out. So that's good, and I do like this a lot. All right, so measuring these two figures, Iron Man is pretty much up there at the seven inch mark, and then Thanos is almost up there to eight and a half inches. All right, so this is how tall the Iron Man Mark 85 is next to the Infinity War Thanos build a figure Iron Spider, and next to the Armadillo build a figure Spider Man No Way Home Doctor Strange. Personally, me, I do like this size comparison between them, and I think that the size comparison between Iron Man and Spider Man are pretty much perfect. As for the heck of it, let's throw in, and just for some pure imagination, let's throw in the what if zombie cap, and I cannot get him to stand straight because of that one boot and one foot. So this is how he stands. But if you were to stand correctly, he'd probably stand like right around here, which is pretty much the same height as like Iron Man right there. So like, it's not that bad, and I actually do like this size comparison. So I think that's pretty good, and those are all the size comparisons I really have. So what's my final verdict on this two-pack? I think it's good. I think it's definitely something that people should get if they're a fan of Marvel Legends. It's definitely something you should get. Definitely worth it. I do believe this was $60, and I definitely think that this is worth it. This is good to buy. Um, you're not going to be disappointed at all. This comes with a lot of accessories. Um, you know, there are some reused things like the entire Iron Man figure and the Thanos figure, but they're all upgraded so much and everything like that. And it just, it's so much better if you guys were interested in Endgame or anything like that, or you just wanted some good figures, definitely get these. These are awesome. This is a good two pack and you will not regret it. So I'm going to give this two pack a 8.5 out of 10. That is going to do it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and turn notifications on so you know when I post more awesome videos like this. And so that way you know when I post my 100th video because currently we are at video 97 at the time um, of this recording. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then do me a favor and please go hit that like button and let me know what you guys thought about this video and these figures in the comment section below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.